I'm Tyson, and I'm a software engineer at Google. Uh, I usually work on problems that involve multi-threading, which is how I came to work on the problem of making a Java tracing library work properly with Kotlin coroutines. Uh, before I get rolling, though, I would like to thank my, uh, these contributors to this problem, particularly my colleague Sonia, uh, for insights into coroutine state machines that helped us make some break breakthroughs and the fine folks at JetBrains for accepting our patches to coroutines. Um, so tracing a, a, a program is usually how we monitor and measure complex systems in production. And here we have a simple Kotlin program that's some sort of request handler divided up into uh, processing headers from the request and processing the body of the request. And to measure this system in production, we add things called spans. You give the span a name, uh, and it, the tracing system will measure how long that span takes. Uh, they nest into a tree so that you get an idea of the overall execution time. In this case, we've got 100 milliseconds to process our request, and we know that that's divided up between 30 milliseconds and 70 milliseconds for the subspans. Uh, a tracing library is how we uh, understand production, particularly for large-scale distributed systems. It's particularly crucial for microservice architectures where it gives people uh, the ability to understand what their system actually did. And it's very useful for uh, post-mortem analysis of issues that aren't necessarily crashes or for getting a rough cut profile of the program, figuring out where you can parallelize it. Um, under the hood, most uh, tracing libraries designed for Java or the JVM um, are modifying something called a trace context object. So when these spans run, as they start and stop, they are inserting their information about the running program into this trace context object. And also to keep the span, li uh, the span syntactically lightweight, that is usually not a variable kept in scope. That simplifies things for the programmer because they don't have to worry about managing this trace context alongside the rest of their business logic. Uh, and it handles concurrency corner cases and uh, so on. On the JVM, uh, that means that this is usually kept in a thread local or a global. Um, and for Java tracing libraries, that means that they are designed to work with uh, thread or executor tasks. Uh, when concurrency gets involved in the program, managing this trace context object can be uh, significantly more difficult than a linear program. And the way that the trace library handles this is by copying the trace context object into each new concurrent task as that task starts. That way, uh, the origin task and the started task do not concurrently modify the trace and emit garbage output. This is how we, uh, we stitch this together later, and that's how we get uh, traces that work in concurrent programs. Unfortunately, uh, when it comes to introducing coroutines into a program and incremental migration being one of the core value propositions of, of Kotlin, uh, the way that suspend functions are compiled by Kotlin C has a fairly major mismatch with the expectations of, of Java or, or JVM semantics. Uh, a single suspend function gets divided up into multiple continuations by Kotlin C, and from the perspective of the running JVM and the syntax of the program, uh, those continuations uh, do not look like an executor task or a thread. There's no syntactic opportunity to manage the trace context object elegantly. And this turns into a compatibility problem fairly quickly. So if we convert our request handler into a suspend request handler and keep using the same tracing library, it doesn't take very long to discover there's a problem. So these spans will basically open up and write to this thread local trace context object and then we suspend in the middle of the function, the thread goes back to the thread pool, and when it comes back later, our trace context might be sitting in that thread local, it might not. We haven't got any particular handling for dealing with that, and so we have a race condition, and usually what this means is we get a missing trace. The, the tail end of the trace uh, doesn't properly associate with the prior one. Um, so fixing this, uh, like, properly uh, was something that we weren't totally sure was actually possible with coroutines before we got started. There is a class called thread context element in coroutines that lets you uh, install and remove uh, thread local state as a coroutine uh, starts and stops on a particular thread. But it has a critical limitation, which is that it can't handle writes to the thread local or, or whatever context while the coroutine is resumed. So if your coroutine is calling into plain Kotlin code or plain Java code, and that modifies the trace while it's running, uh, 
the coroutine when it suspends again is going to lose all of those updates to the state, lose state, and so the trace winds up corrupt. Uh, the solution that we wound up adding to Kotlin coroutines is a class called copyable thread context element, which gives a coroutine task local storage. So when you launch a new coroutine, use launch or async or, or the related functions that start something like a task in Kotlin X coroutines, uh, it associates storage with that task that you can then keep a var in. And that means that you can copy the trace from the thread's idea of what the world is into the coroutine's idea of what the world is and keep these in sync and so that the uh, Java code that expects to find its trace sitting in the thread local will still find it sitting there. But when the coroutine suspends, it has all of the updates relevant and can put it back with the uh, thread context element hooks. There's a little bit of subtlety here. You need to add some callback blue, uh, it's, it, but it does work. Um, and deploying this mechanism uh, is relatively straightforward. So if you have global dispatches, global coroutine contexts in your program, you can add a context element into these, and then it will propagate out from your global contexts into anything that starts on those contexts, uh, child contexts, and, and so on. Uh, the copyable thread context element will propagate through this and handle all of the memory correctly. This is also a useful technique for deploying some other things uh, for interacting with the coroutine machinery under the hood. And if you get this right, um, the result is both accurate traces and a very simple span syntax when we start interacting with the naturally very complicated migratory Java and JVM use cases for Kotlin. Uh, because the executor and thread infrastructure in the running program still finds its tracing, still finds all of its information where it expected in the thread local, um, you can just basically decorate the program in a, a, a simple lightweight way. And whether you have coroutines starting executor tasks or starting threads that then start more coroutine tasks or go to some global coroutine scope, uh, everything sort of hangs together and the trace output remains coherent. So um, if you have a problem to do with tracing and any other similar problem to do with thread local state, this doesn't just apply to tracing, it also applies to Java RPC systems. Um, but if you have this problem of thread locals or global context or state corruption as your coroutine suspends and resumes on a particular thread, uh, give copyable thread context element a look. The, this machinery is good for solving these kinds of grungy uh, thread coroutine interactions. It's uh, part of Kotlin coroutines, and we give a, an example of a, a tracing copyable thread context element in the class kdoc. So give it a look if this sounds like something that uh, might help you. Uh, thank you, and uh, don't forget to vote for my talk. If this is interesting stuff to you, uh, I will be at the Google booth uh, for the rest of the evening, and please come and chat to me. Thank you. Any questions on this topic? I, I have uh, lost a lot of um, uh, trace uh, when using together spring and uh, coroutines. Uh, do you have any suggestion on this kind of, have you ever experienced? So the question is uh, uh, about losing trace context in, in spring. And yes, uh, I think this is the tool that solves that problem for spring. Um, but like with many other libraries and many other bugs filed on the Kotlin coroutines tracker about problems of this nature, uh, I don't think many libraries have integrated this fully. Other questions, please? <coughs> All right. Well, thank you.